afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Omaha, Nebraska, Rosenblatt Stadium, and the NCAA College World Series. A beautiful day for baseball. It doesn't get any more exciting than this. series is all about sunshine and college baseball and about as much fun as you can have. The 1998 NCAA College World Series, a record of records. Brought to you by Wilson, maker of the official ball for NCAA baseball championships. For the 49th consecutive year, Omaha, Nebraska has served as host to the College World Series, the ultimate accomplishment in college baseball, the dream of so many youngsters. Beautiful Rosenblatt Stadium once again is the site for this magnificent event. The double elimination format with a one game championship provides exciting baseball year after year. And 1998 is no different. These eight teams represent the country's finest programs. After advancing through regional competition, the teams arrive in Omaha with a mission, to soar above the competition, to win a national championship. Game one, Arizona State against Florida State. Arizona State is making its 18th appearance in the College World Series, but it's the Sun Devils' first ever under head coach Pat Murphy. ASU always plays one of the toughest regular season schedules in the nation, and this year was no exception. The Sun Devils played 34 games against top 25 teams, including two teams in the College World Series field, USC and Florida State. That competition prepares a team for the intense atmosphere at Rosenblatt Stadium. The Florida State Seminoles are built on tradition. 51 winning seasons, 17 50 win seasons, 15 conference championships, 21 consecutive appearances in the NCAA regionals, and 16 College World Series appearances. But head coach Mike Martin Seminoles are still looking for that elusive first ever College World Series title. Would 1998 be the year of the Seminoles? Arizona State scored the first run of the College World Series when Andrew Beinbrink singled in the top of the third. The Sun Devils made it two to nothing, but the lead was short-lived. Jeremy Salazar hit one out of the yard, scoring Jose Zabala and tying the score at two. In the top of the fifth, Greg Halverson broke the game open with a three-run home run, giving Arizona State an 8-2 lead. But the Seminoles clawed back with ASU leading 8-6 in the bottom of the sixth. Salazar came through in the clutch with a grand slam to give Florida State its first lead, 10-8. But back come the Sun Devils in the top of the seventh. Rudy Arguez singled and Dustin DeLuke scored on a throwing error, tying the game at 10. Then a wild pitch scored Willie Bloomquist, giving Arizona State an 11-10 lead. Florida State had a chance in the bottom of the seventh. Terry Henderson singles, but watch Michael Moreno. Guns down Carl Jernigan at the plate, preserving the Arizona State lead. Then in the bottom of the eighth, the Seminoles had no chance. Reliever Chad Pennington struck out the side. Pennington struck out five and three in the third as Arizona State held on to win 11-10. Game two, Long Beach State versus Miami. The 49ers come to Omaha swinging some hot bats. 
Head coach Dave Snow's team won 15 of its final 16 games of the regular season. And after losing in the opening round to the NCAA West Regional, the 49ers won four straight to earn its way to the College World Series. During that run, Long Beach State averaged almost 10 runs and 12 hits per game. And it's a once in a lifetime thing uh, for these guys. And, uh, you know, they're going to cherish and uh, remember this experience uh, the rest of their lives and be able to share it with uh, their friends and, uh, and their families as they grow, grow up. Jim Morris has been the head coach at the University of Miami for five years. Over that span of time, his teams have averaged 50 wins a season and have made an appearance in Omaha each time. That's some record. The Hurricanes have scored 629 runs this season, the third highest total in school history and third in the nation. The only two years with higher totals were 1982 and 1985, Miami's two College World Series championship seasons. The Canes' Alex Santos started off in typical fashion, striking out Jaron Madison to end the second inning. Facing pitcher Mike Gallo, first team All-America Pat Burrell put the Hurricanes on the board first with a solo shot in the bottom of the second. Later in the second, Herman Alvarez double, scoring Rick Segizi, giving Miami a 2-0 lead. Then Long Beach State came up with some great defense as Madison robs Manny Crespo. It's Santos again. This time he gets Jason Yount looking. Miami took a 3-1 lead, and Robbie Morrison relieved Santos in the ninth. Morrison dominated, striking out three of the four batters he faced. Miami opened its title chase with a win. Game three, LSU versus USC. Louisiana State head coach Skip Bertman and his power-hitting Tigers rolled into Omaha looking to become just a second team in the 52-year history of the College World Series to three-peat. Ironically, the only team to ever do it, USC, would be LSU's opening opponent. And if the Tigers could win a third straight, they'd get another title. College baseball's team of the 90s, having won the College World Series in 1991, 93, 96, and 97. The Tigers were poised and ready to make a run. Not many teams ever have the chance to do that. Uh, we're fortunate to be one of the teams that do, you know. Um, if, it, if it happens, it's great. But if not, uh, then we have to be, you know, we have to be content on what does happen. And, and we're just going to be focused and play hard and uh, just do our best. The Trojans from Southern California are no strangers to Omaha. This program is steeped in tradition, having won 11 titles in 18 previous College World Series appearances. This is the Trojans' second appearance in the College World Series in the last four years. Head coach Mike Gillespie's team is known for doing the little things right, a very important element for any team with its sights set on a College World Series title. Well, it's a big tradition. Um, you know, we've won more national championships than any other school. And uh, to come out here and represent our school, um, you know, it's something we, uh, we're, real we're real proud of and uh, something we, uh, you know, we like to get out here and, and just play hard. USC's Seth Etherton started out strong. Oh, and to the count to Higgins. We are just underway. Here's the pitch. Swung out and missed. He struck him out on three pitches. And there's one gone. The payoff again. Paul strike three. And here it comes. And he struck him out. Three straight pitches over the outside corner. LSU starter Jake Estevez gets roughed up early. Eric Munson starts a scoring for USC. Here's the pitch. Ground ball, base hit. It's a one to nothing ball game under the glove of Furness and easily scoring from third base is Rachel. Then in the third, Brad Ticehurst puts USC up 3 0 with a two run single, scoring Greg Hanoyan and Morgan Ensberg. Eddie Furness got LSU going in the top of the fourth. Swung and Eddie hits it a long way to right field. And it is out of here with a line drive. Home run by Furness.
But USC answered in the bottom of the fourth with a two-run home run by Jeremy Freitas, giving the Trojans a 5-1 lead. LSU's bats woke up. Wes Davis's fifth inning solo shot cut the USC lead to 5-2. The home run barrage was on. Top of the sixth, Brad Cressy. There she goes, way back to center field. Kiss saying goodbye, it's a two run home run for Cressy. Mike Pinning, here's the pitch, swung and that's hit to right center field in a long way, way back. But USC coach Mike Gillespie knew his team would respond. In the bottom of the sixth, Rob Gore did just that. His grand slam gave the Trojans a 9-5 lead. Skip Bertman's Tigers responded big time in the seventh. It was a display that would go down in the annals of College World Series history. Here's the pitch. Swung on that ball. It's hit the left field. And way back there. It is going, going. And it is gone. Cedric Harris with the leadoff home run. Here's the 2-2 pitch to Higgins. Swung on. There's a long fly ball. Way, way back. And that one is gone. Holy cow, it's 10-7. Higgins homers over the center field screen. It was a sixth home run off Etherton. He had never given up more than three in any one game during his career. His day was over. Live, oh my goodness, that is way, way back. It is gone. Holy cow, McClure homers. And then Brad Cressy tied it 10-10 on the Tigers' fourth home run of the inning. It was LSU's eighth of the game, shattering the College World Series single game record of five. This game was still tied in the top of the eighth. Here's the payoff pitch. Line drive into center field. Base hit by McClure. And a score two with the Tigers leading 12 to 10. Doug Thompson, the winning pitcher in the 1997 championship game, put the Trojans away by striking out Jason Lane to end the game. The two teams combined for 10 home runs, breaking the College World Series record of seven. The eight LSU home runs were hit by seven different players, and the phrase gorilla ball became the story in Omaha. Game four, Mississippi State versus Florida. Mississippi State's second straight appearance in the College World Series seemed unlikely earlier this season. First-year head coach Pat McMahon's Diamond Dog stood at 6-12 after 18 games of its rugged Southeastern Conference schedule. But McMahon's veteran squad battled back and qualified for the SEC tourney and went on to win the NCAA Central Regional. This is Mississippi State's seventh appearance in the College World Series. Uh, I mean, it's, you know, it's incredible. It's my second year back here. You know, I'm real fortunate to go back to back. And each time you walk on the field, you get chills. And, you know, especially playing in front of these great fans and playing against a great team like Florida. The University of Florida arrives in Omaha with a lot of pressure. K.C. Smith and his Gator teammates are the number one seed in the 1998 College World Series. They are here for the second time in the last three years and fourth time overall. And Florida head coach Andy Lopez is no stranger here. This is Lopez's second appearance with the Gators, and his 1992 Pepperdine Waves won the College World Series title. He's just the seventh coach in history to take two different teams to the College World Series. Mississippi State scored first when Brooks Bryan went deep on Brad Wilkerson in the top of the second. The Bulldogs led 1-0. Then Gorilla Ball continued. The 1-0 pitch coming, swung on. There's a drive to beat left field. It might be out of here. It is gone. A quick run home run by Rusty Times and Mississippi State leads by the score of five to nothing. 
After a sack fly in the second, Florida went gorilla. David Ross's solo shot made it 5-2. Then it was Jason Dill's turn. Swung on, there's a fly ball. Hit deep into center field. This ball is hit back and back, and it is gone! Oh, my! That's over the batter's eye. Straight away center field, a 430-foot bomb. Back-to-back -back home runs as Dill goes deep in Omaha. Florida went to Josh Fogg to settle things down. He struck out the side in the sixth. Matt Siegel came to the plate with Florida trailing 10-6. Here's the pitch swung on, and there's a drive. This is in the right center field for a base hit. Siegel around first as the run is in. Martin has scored. Siegel cruises into second. He's got a double, and the Gators now trail 10-7. MSU responds in the ninth. 2-2 two -two pitch. Is hit in the air, deep into center. That might get out, and it is gone. Home run for Pat. Florida rallied in the ninth. Here's a 2-2 pitch. Swung on, ground ball. It's going to be a base hit in the right field. Siegel is going to come around third. He will score. It's now 14-13, and Wilkerson has gone to third base. Oh, my. We're not done yet. Florida was hoping for one last chance. The pitch is coming, swung on, bouncing ball to first. First baseman has it, steps into the bag, and the Mississippi State Bulldogs have upset the top seed in this NCAA College World Series. Mississippi State 14, and the Florida Gators 13. Listen to this crowd. After LSU belted eight home runs in game three, gorilla ball became the catchphrase of the College World Series. And it wasn't only LSU. The home run pace for the entire field was on target to crush the College World Series record. So why has gorilla ball replaced small ball? You know, uh, the alleys are 360. Uh, it's a great ballpark. The alleys are 360 and the wind blows out a lot. And, uh, you know, we got big, strong guys that are the best hitters in the college game and the uh, ball's going to get out of here. And we got pitchers thrown pretty good, too. So all that combination is there's going to be some home runs. Uh, simple. It's a small ballpark, and there's a lot of big, strong players here. Well, you've, you're showcasing the eight teams that are as good as any in the country right here. The wind normally blows out. The players' adrenaline are, is at an all-time high. I mean, my goodness alive, there's a lot of home runs hit by folks that don't normally hit home runs when you have an environment like that. Game five is a winner's bracket matchup between Miami and Arizona State. In the 1997 Atlantic Regional, Miami beat Arizona State two games in a row to advance to the College World Series. Revenge would be sweet for the Sun Devils as Pat Murphy goes with Ryan Mills. The lefty leads the Sun Devils with 133 strikeouts in 108 innings. Darren Spassoff gets a call from Miami. The Hurricane righty got a win in the 1997 College World Series. And the pitch to Vinebrink. Swung on. There's a drive to right field. It might be out of here. It could be. It is a home run for Andrew Vinebrink. And Arizona State takes a 2 nothing lead. Spazoff was lifted after allowing four runs. But Todd Ozias couldn't do any better. Jeff Phelps, single, scored Willie Bloomquist and Rudy Arguez to make it 6 nothing Arizona State. Mills was strong, striking out Brian Seaver. He got a standing ovation from his father. Miami's Pat Burrow showed why he's an All-America. The one-strike pitch, swung on, driven into the alley in left center field. That ball's in there for a base hit. One run will score. Here comes Hill rounding third. Burrow with a base hit. Miami's on the board. Six to two Sun Devils. ASU's Aaron Kramer struck out three Hurricanes in three innings of relief. Here's the pitch, fastball, strike three call on the outside corner, and Michaels is gone. One ball, two strikes, the count to Hill. Here's the stretch. Here's the pitch. Breaking ball hit on the ground, could be two. Bloomquist shovels to Collins for one. Back to first, Collins at first base. The game is over. The Devils will go on to the Wednesday game in the winner's bracket final here at Omaha in the College World Series. Game six is the first elimination game of the 1998 College World Series. The loser of the Florida State Long Beach State game gets an early trip home. 
The two teams have met only one time as Long Beach State beat Florida State in the 1993 regional. Florida State sent freshman Nick Stocks to the mound. The right-hander ranks fifth in the NCAA with a 2.00 ERA. Caleb Balbuena takes the mound for the 49ers. The right-hander was a hero in the West Regional title game against Alabama, allowing three runs in eight innings. After two scoreless innings, Brooks Batto got things rolling. His ground out knocked in Carl Jernigan, and the Seminoles led 1-0. Then a good bounce helps Long Beach State. Here's a windup and the one-two offering. It's a wild pitch thrown over the head of the catcher. It ricochets back to the catcher. It goes to the third baseman who tags the runner out. Florida State adds more in the top of the fourth. Here's the pitch to him, and there's a high fly ball to deep right field. Back goes Sledge and Lopez to the track. To the wall. It's gone. Patty Diaz goes to right center field and gives the Seminoles a four-to-nothing lead. Long Beach State is officially known as the Dirtbags. And in the bottom of the fourth, Jason Yount gives the fans something to cheer about. Here's the pitch to Yount. He swings. There's a drive to right field. It's drifting back. It is out of here. A solo home run for Jason Yount. And Long Beach State is on the scoreboard. It's now four to one. Meanwhile, Val Buena was looking strong. And Mike Hoda gets a big hit. 4-2 Florida State. Here's the 1-1 pitch. Swung on. It's a ground ball up the middle. Coming over. It's a shortstop. He can't get it. Groves misses the ball. Sledge scores from third. Lopez coming in. No throw to the plate. We're tied up at four. Florida State was a victim of some great dirtbag defense. Important pitch for Balbuena. Swung on. It's a ground ball. Yelp dives. Makes a great stop. He throws down a second to get the lead runner. Outstanding defensive play by Jason Yell. And the pitch, bouncing ball towards short. This could be two. They flip over to second. That's one. And the throw to first is a double play. Seminoles at first and second. Long Beach State playing for the punt. And Groves has already turned around. Now a pickoff throw to second, and Kevin Cash is out by a mile. Kevin Cash was caught five feet off second base of the Seminoles, whose bad base running cost him a chance to tie the game on Friday, make a horrendous mistake there. In the bottom of the seventh, Long Beach State put the game out of reach when Scott Red Fox went deep for a three-run home. 3-1 pitch on the way. Swung on and hit and hit well towards right center field. Going back for it is Diab. It's out of here. A home run, a three-run shot for Scott Redbox. And Long Beach State takes the lead, 7-4. Long Beach State kept their dreams alive with a win and faces Miami next, while Florida State is the first team eliminated from the 1998 College World Series. The winner's bracket matchup for game seven pits two teams very familiar with one another. This is the 325th meeting between Mississippi State and Louisiana State, dating way back to 1907. Mississippi State won the 1998 season series three games to two. LSU sends Randy Kiesler to the mound with a 4.5 to one strikeout to walk ratio. While Mississippi State sends Jeremy Jackson to the hill, who beat the Tigers during the season. Kiesler started off well, striking out Brad Freeman. Kiesler struck out four of the first seven Bulldog batters. But LSU's Brad Cressy started the Tigers' gorilla ball routine in the second inning, giving LSU a 2-0 lead. Next batter, Clint Earnhardt, made it 3-0. This is a solo shot. Then it was Wes Davis' turn into the center field, and that ball has gone for another home run. LSU has just hit three home runs in a row and make it a four to nothing ball game. Mississippi State got on the board by way of a bases loaded walk to Freeman. With LSU up 4-2, Keesler got out of a bases loaded jam. There's a bouncing ball, second baseman has it, 
Flips to second for one, back to first two, double play, gets LSU out of the inning. But LSU got two runs back. Harris hits it in the air, deep into right. That one may go and will go for a home run. The Bulldogs' Brooks Bryan responded in the top of the fifth. There was a wind-up and a pitch to it. There's a base hit right at the middle, into center field. One run is scored. Here comes Freeman. We have a one-run ball game. Bottom of the fifth, what's new? Swung out, he hit the left field. That's way right back there. That has a chance to get out of here. And it is bad. a two-run homer. Holy cow, that is the fifth home run of the ball game for LSU and Barbier's ninth of the year. Mississippi State added a run in the sixth. Then Richard Lee narrowed LSU's lead to 8-7 with a solo shot. But LSU put it out of reach with, you guessed it. There goes the run of the pitch, is swung on, hit the left field. That's got a chance to leave the yard, and it will! Higgins, a two-run homer! Holy cow! And the Tigers have tied the College World Series record with 14. By winning the first two games, the Tigers get two days rest while waiting the outcome of the loser's bracket. It's the sights and sounds around Rosenblatt Stadium that make the College World Series so special. And behind the scenes, there's one man responsible for taking us out to the old ball game. I've been the organist here at Rosenblatt Stadium for probably 30 years, something like that, maybe a little more, off and on. I play all the, all the Royals games, and of course I play during the World Series. This organ it was built about 1940, I believe. It's an old organ, but it's been here for a long time, and it's a real ballpark organ, very nice. Works out real well for what we need. So the teams come in during the series, and they bring their music, and I, I uh, usually write it out for the organ. I got thrown out of a, one of the Royals games one time for playing the wrong song for... An umpire was having a little trouble one afternoon, and... and uh, I played the wrong song and he asked me to leave, which I did. And that leaves us wondering, what tune could he possibly play to get ejected from a game? Sounds a little Mickey Mouse, doesn't it? Game eight is another elimination game as Southern California faces Florida. Jason Lane gets the call for the Trojans. He earned a win in the last two games of the East Regional. Florida's Tommy Bond is no stranger to pressure situations. In his career, he is 3-0 in NCAA elimination games. And the pitch is coming, swung off. There's a drive to left center field. This baby might be out of here. It is! A three-run home run for K.C. Smith, and the Florida Gators have a three-nothing lead. USC's Eric Munson answered in a second. And the right-hander delivers 2-2, and Munson lifts it to right field and deep. Back goes Nicholson, away back. That ball's long out of here. Home run, Eric Munson. He hit it into the top row of the bleachers, and it is 3-2 in favor of Florida. Then in the third, Rob Gore gave USC the lead. 0-2 curveball, line drive, base hit into left field. That's going to score two runs. Gore with a big turn, and he's going to go for two. Here comes the throw to second, and it's cut off. So a two-run double for Rob Moore, and the Trojans lead 4-3. to three. In the bottom of the inning, Greg Catalanotti tied the game 4-4 with a solo shot. Later that inning, Lane got some help from his defense. Curveball is grounded. Gore backhands it on a knee. And now feeds Lane for the out. Very nice play by Rob Gore. USC jumped back on top of the fourth with a solo home run by Brad Ticehurst. Two batters later, Lane, staying in the game as the DH, went deep, giving the Trojans a 6-4 lead. Then more great D from USC. 2-1 pitch. Swung on. 
Bouncing ball to first. Gloved again by Gore. Flips to the pitcher, Penny, and the Gators are down in order. And the Trojans seem to have it all going on here right now. Penny at the belt. And the one-two pitch, fastball grounded to the right of Rachel's dives, comes up with it from his knees, throws it out. Bottom of the eighth, Mark Ellis comes through for floor. Here's the pitch, swung on. There's a drive to left field. It might be out of here. It could be. And this game is tied at 8-8. Eight -eight. A big two-run home run. The game went to the 11th inning as Jeremy Friedis came to the play. Fine drive, base hit. In the center field, scoring is Munson. Scoring, standing up as Tysers. It's 10-8 Trojans. And luck was on USC's side. There's a pitch lifted to left and deep. Back goes Freitas. It is off the top of the wall. The run will score. Going to second is Dill. Good throw. He is out at second base. Oh, what a play and what a throw by Freitas. USC held on to win 12, 10, and 11 innings. The four-hour, 17-minute game was the fourth longest in College World Series history. USC advances to face Mississippi State, while the top-seeded Gators become the second team from the state of Florida to get an early exit. Game nine is a rematch of game two. In that game, Alex Santos pitched a gem in beating the 49ers 3-1, the lowest scoring game to date. Long Beach State pitches Mike Gallo, whose six-game winning streak was broken in a game two loss to Miami. The Hurricanes starter, Darrell Roke, won 13 of his last 15 decisions. With runners on first and third, Jason Yount grounds into a double play. But Mike Hoda scores. Long Beach leads 1-0 in the second. Justin Hall is up next. And now Justin Hall steps up and he hits the first pitch deep to right field. Going back on it is Michaels at the warning track. He looks up and it's gone. Justin Hall with a solo shot here in the second inning, and Long Beach State goes up on Miami two to nothing. Aubrey Huff erases the lead in the bottom of the second. Here comes a 2-2 pitch to Huff. This one hit high in the air and deep to right field. Lopez going back. He's got no chance. That's where all the ones in batting practice were. Aubrey Huff has left the building and tied this one at two. Gallo fans Manny Crespo for his fifth strikeout in the first three innings. Roke gets out of trouble in the fourth by getting Jaron Madison to ground into a big 6-4-3 double play. More glove work by Miami. Runner goes on three and one. This ball is hit to Bobby Hill. A great stop on the hop. Makes a diving stop over to first in time. In the bottom of the fifth, Bobby Hill breaks a 2-2 tie with an RBI single, scoring Rick Seguiz. But the 49ers come right back. And Yelts singles this one into center field. Seaver was playing pretty shallow. They're going to wave Hoda around, however, and there's a relay. Not in time. Run scores make it 3-3 three to three on the RBI single by Jason Yount. Gallo again. He gets Russ Jacobson looking for his seventh strikeout of the game. Top of the ninth. Base is loaded. Nobody out. One ball and two strikes to Chuck Lopez. Here's a stretch and the pitch to Lopez. He swings, base hit to right field. Coming from third and scores Hall. Mumboy is waved in. He comes in. He is safe. And Long Beach State leads with two runs by a score of five to three. Pat Burrell's stellar career at Miami comes to a close as Long Beach State holds on to win 6-3. All three teams from the state of Florida have been eliminated from the College World Series. Long Beach State now advances the face to 2-0 Arizona State Sunday. Game 10 represents the first ever meeting between Southern California and Mississippi State. It's a battle of two freshman pitchers. USC sends Rick Currier, who has a 5-1 record. Meanwhile, Mississippi State has Mark Freed on the hill. He comes into the game with a 6-5 record. With both teams facing elimination, 
Brad Ticehurst starts the action in the top of the second with a solo home run. In the third, Ticehurst again. Fastball, and he lifts it to right field. That's pretty deep. Going back on the ball is Weiss at the wall, and he leaps. It is on the field. What are they saying? Home run. Home run, Brad Ticehurst. The Bulldogs get some great defense from Rusty Toms. He robs Seth Davidson in the third. Then Munson in the fourth. One two pitch to Munson. Fly ball, hit the left, coming in, coming in, getting there to make the diving catch once again as Rusty Tom. Courier dominated the Bulldog lineup. Richard Lee was one of his victims. <laughs> USC padded its 5-0 lead in the seventh. There's a bunt, squeezes on, and the bunt gets down. The run will score, the out is recorded 1-3, and the Trojans lead 6-0. Courier struck out 12 while allowing just four hits. Courier at the belt and his one two pitch on the way. Got it swinging with a slider. Strike three, strikeout number 12 for Rick Courier. USC wins 7 1. The Trojans now advance to face a well rested Louisiana State team. Mississippi State's visit to Omaha has come to an end. Once again, millions of viewers watch the College World Series on national television. Those who want information online can log on to NCAABaseball.com. Uh, the NCAA Online is brought to you by Total College Sports Network and is here to provide up to the second information, including stats, play-by-play, -play, photos, and any historical and archival information that you would possibly want from uh, the College World Series. As you can see here, we have uh, up to the second pitch information, who's on base here, who's up, where the pitches are, got up to the second box score, play-by-play, -play, charts, those are hitting charts and pitching charts, stats for everyone in the game, and photos that we take uh, every few seconds. We hope to have over 30 million hits and over 15 million page views. When game 11 hits at the College World Series, the tension really mounts. Just four teams remain. While USC and LSU wait, Arizona State and Long Beach State square off for game 11. The 49ers need to win to stave off elimination and force another game with the 2-0 Sun Devils. With all the runs scored during the College World Series, the Long Beach pitching staff must be commended for its stingy 3.46 ERA in its three games. Jeff Lewenberger looks to keep it going for the Dirtbags. Arizona State knows that a win gives them two days off before the championship game. The Sun Devils are 9-1 when Richie Leone starts. Typical for this College World Series, the scoring begins with a home run. In the top of the second, Michael Collins puts ASU up 2-0 with a single, scoring Dustin DeLuke. Then the 49ers give the Sun Devils a gift. Coming in is Justin Hall, also coming in is Red Fox. It's going to be Hall, and he, but and he drops the ball. Two runs are in for ASU on the error by Hall. The 49ers have a two-strike ritual, but it doesn't help Mike Hoda, as Leon gets his third strike. Leon's in a bases loaded jam in the bottom of the third. As he's a ground ball right back to the pitcher. He goes to the shortstop, Collins over to first base, Meyer. Long Beach State shot for runs right there, goes down the drain. In the fourth, Kennedy puts Long Beach on the board. Now he hits a shot down the right field line. Coming over is Marino. He's back on the warning track. It's oh. out of here. Home run for Brian Kennedy. No longer 0 for Omaha after that home run. And Long Beach State has their first run of the ball game. Aaron Kramer relieved Leon in the seventh and strikes out Jaron Madison. 
Then in the eighth, Bloomquist goes to his right and makes a great throw to get Hoda. Arizona State won it big, 14 to four, sending the 49ers home. The Sun Devils advance to the championship game. They'll get two days rest as they watch USC and LSU battle for the other title game berth. Game 12 has all the storylines any fan could relish. This is Skip Bertman's 1,000th game as LSU head coach. USC's 11 championships leads the NCAA, while LSU looks to be the first three-peat champion since USC accomplished the feat back in 1974. With a win, LSU will have won 11 straight College World Series games, breaking a record they share with USC. And LSU has hit 14 home runs in just two games, already tying the all-time College World Series record with the 1995 Trojans. But what matters most is an LSU win puts the Tigers in the championship game, while USC win forces a rematch. LSU went gorilla early in the top of the first. Josh Dalton Homer giving the Tigers a one to nothing lead. Now every LSU starter has at least one home run in the College World Series. In the bottom of the second, Morgan Ensberg put the Trojans on the board with a solo home run. the scoreboard behind the bleachers in left field. What a bomb. Then some controversy. Pitch, there's a base hit to left field. Coming around third base. Here comes Sanoyan. Here comes the throw. He slides and he is tagged out by the LSU catcher. And that will end the inning. LSU's D came through again. His 0-2 pitch to Lane is lifted to right field. Davis going towards the line. It should be deep enough. Davis for the catch. Here comes Ticers. Here comes the throw. It's a good throw. He's out at the plate. Seth Etherton was impressive oh. all day long. In the fifth, he struck out the side. In the bottom of the sixth, Munson tied the game at two with a solo home run. But then LSU went gorilla again. Swung up, hit the right field. Drifting back is the right fielder, Tyser. He's at the wall, and he can't get it. It's a home run for Cedric Harris. Holy cow. The game seesawed back in the bottom of the seventh. Hanoyan's bunt scored Seth Davidson, tying the game at three. Then USC loaded the bases. One one pitch. Curveball grounded wide to first. Furness to second in the dirt. They field it, but that's the only play they get. Rachel scores, and the Trojans lead four to three. USC added an important insurance run in the bottom of the eighth when Davidson tripled, scoring pinch runner Jeff DePippo. USC took a 5-3 lead into the ninth. Trojan reliever Jack Krawcheck got his 48th career save, tying an NCAA Division I record. USC forces a rematch. Game 13 finds the LSU Tigers in a strange situation facing elimination before the championship game. And though USC had a tougher road to game 13, momentum is on the Trojan side. Both teams' bats were quiet through four innings. Then Jason Lane went deep to center field. USC took a two to nothing lead and the Trojan bats were alive. Swung up, into right field, back is Davis, and is going, going, that is out of here. And that is the second home run of the ball game that Thompson has delivered up. And the Trojan lead it four to nothing. 
In the top of the seventh, it was Lane again, his third home run of the College World Series. This gives USC a 5-0 lead. USC pitcher Mike Penny had a terrific game. He allowed just three LSU runs in seven two-thirds innings as USC beat LSU for the second straight day and eliminated the two-time defending champs. So much for a three-peat. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Rosenblatt Stadium in Omaha, Nebraska for the championship game of the College World Series. The two most successful baseball programs in NCAA history meet for the right to be called champion. Rested Arizona State looks for its sixth national championship. In 1948, USC won its first of 11 College World Series titles. That same year, Michigan won its first hockey championship and Kentucky won its first basketball championship. This year, 50 years later, Michigan won the hockey championship and Kentucky won the basketball championship. Now it's USC's turn to complete the symmetry. ASU's Ryan Mills on the mound. Rob Gore got things going. Rachel's in second, Hanoi and away from the bag at first as Mills comes set. Here's the pitch to Gore, hit high in the air to left field. Back goes Deluki to the warning track at the wall. Good wood, good distance, goodbye. Three nothing USC. In the top of the second, Jeremy Freitas doubled, scoring Jason Lane. The Trojans took a 4 0 lead. Later that inning, Wes Rachel's turn. His three run shot made it 7 0. And Arizona State still couldn't get out of the inning. Gore homered for the second time. This one a solo shot. To me, it's 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 the best accomplishment I've ever I've ever achieved in baseball. And I mean, it, I'm sure it is for all these guys on this team. And uh, I, I there's no words to explain the the feelings that you get when you win it. And it looked like the route was on. They're hard, tough-nosed players, and they always fight, and we expected a game like this, you know? It was nice to be up 8-0 or whatever it was, but we knew they were coming back. And they did. Collins hits a drive to left field. Goodbye! Grand slam! Home run! Michael Collins! And the Devils are back in it! And they did it again in the fourth. 3-2 pitch, off speed, and hit to left and deep. Forget about it. Two-run home run, and we've got ourselves a 9-8 ball game. In the top of the sixth, USC's Wes Rachels did more damage. Davidson goes, 1-1 one, one pitch, hit and run play. Rachels hits it down the left field line. There goes DeLuke, he dives and he doesn't get this one. It'll go into the corner. Davidson around third, he's gonna score on a double by Wes Rachels. The Trojans lead it 10 to eight. Then the shocker with two strikes and two outs in the seventh. Here comes Zansberg, he's gonna try to steal, hold the pitch, he's safe, he stole it. My main concern at that point was just make sure that he pitches. And he, he pitched, and, and I, I got about four or five, six maybe steps before he, he released the ball. And at that point, I was sitting there going, hey, I, I think I'm going to make it on this one. It was certainly an unorthodox move and defies, I think, common sense. But in fact, uh, we felt that it was a calculated risk and one that we had uh, an, on, an odds-on chance of completing. I was trying to stand there as long as I could so I can, you know, give him a little distraction to the catcher. It changed the whole momentum of the game. I think, I believe Coach Murphy stated that. And 
it was exciting. It was just really exciting. I'm glad that we had a little luck on our side, you know, to be able to uh, make that play happen. Here's the pitch to Rachel. It's a curve line to left, the base hit. It doesn't matter now anyway. Two more runs are in. Seven RBIs for Wes Rachels, and the Trojans lead 14 to 8. Never in my wildest dreams would I ever thought of, of coming out here and getting five hits and seven RBIs, a home run in the College World Series, and getting MVP. That's just, it's just a dream come true. But despite all that, the Sun Devils still came back. Andrew Beinbrink's two-run home run to right cut the USC lead to 14-13. USC led 17-14 and had the bases loaded in the ninth when Jason Lane lived out a dream. 0-2 pitch on the way. Curveball lifted to center field and deep. Back goes Arguez at the track, at the wall. It's gone! Grand slam over for Jason Lane. And the Trojans have blown it wide open. I mean, you know, it was a big time in the game. We needed a couple more runs and uh, I had never hit a grand slam before in my life. That was my first one, and uh, it was an exciting one, that's for sure. Reliever Jack Krofcheck closed out the Sun Devils in the bottom of the ninth, getting his NCAA career record 49th save. And the USC Trojans win their 12th NCAA title. When we had that lead in the ninth inning, I was sitting there going, hey, wait a minute. We're we, we just might be the national champs right now. And when uh, Jeff in left field caught that ball, I, the emotions, I, I, I couldn't even describe it. It was unbelievable. It's, it's the best thing that's, that's ever happened to me in baseball. I've been here four years, and uh, we're working hard every single day, every single, all the early morning practices, all the fall ball practices, just for this one moment right here. It's just amazing. It's just amazing. So despite a College World Series where at least 60 records were broken, it all came down to a coach willing to go against the book and a team willing to do anything necessary to win. The mighty Trojans from Southern California win their unprecedented 12th College World Series title.